Just going to show the keyboards and synths that I use for the beginning section of Feather Blue by Tom Harris is OK. The reason I use these sounds really was to create a sense of a sense of anticipation and also to allow the vocal at the beginning of the song to feel very, very spacious, have nothing interfering with it. I felt the vocal was very intimate and I wanted the first section of the song, well, I wanted the whole song to feel intimate, but I wanted the sense of anticipation and the vocal to draw you in. So I, so I sort of chose sounds that were a bit unusual. And if you hear how they work with the vocal, well, the, um, the vocal comes in just here. Feather blue. Feather blue. So this bottom sound here, this is the bootler sequence that I created using the Archeria version of the bootler. Spent a bit of time programming up this weird sound. I never really did quite know how the bootler works. I've bounced it out as audio now, so we won't be looking at the actual bootler, but I also wanted it to feel far away because the vent, the vocal feels up close. So the way I make things feel farther away, feel far away, sorry, is to cut all the high end frequencies off, you know, rolling off from like 800 or 1K. So it's really very sort of muffled sounding. And then I'm using Space Designer Ice Plate Reverb because I like the sound of it. So the sound on its own is this. That's without the reverb. So the rhythm of that bootler is the same as the guitar strum pattern. It's this 6 8 doom da doom ga doom ga doom ga doom ga doom. So that gives you the rhythm. And then I thought, well, let's have something doing the low end that isn't a bass, that isn't a guitar, there's something quite sort of fundamental sounding. And I found this, well, I used it just a sine wave to create this. This is the, the bass. And then this is the harmony. And the second sound's got a little bit of a tape warble flutter on it. I like doing that. When I've got two sounds the same or coming from the same instrument, I, I record them on separate channels, but then one of them I put a little bit of movement on and it just differentiates it. So if you listen to those together. And in the mix, it's, it's kind of not that perceptible that one of them is slightly wobbly, but it just, it just gives it character. If that wasn't wobbling around, it would be so locked in at that frequency, it might sound a bit odd. So yeah, made it a bit cr crusty sounding, basically. And then the intro that um, Tom, the artist, Tom sent me a, a like, kind of voice recording or a little kind of a phone recording of this kind of pattern of tumbling clock notes. Originally, I had a different melody that was more succinct and a bit more sort of twee and like uh, lullaby-esque, but we ended up going for something that was you know, not so suggestive and a bit more random. Yeah, and it's just doing its own little thing. When the vocal goes to the, the pre-chorus, I've got this second bootler sound that comes in, which I've, again, I would have dialed it in and it, I don't really know what the bootler's doing. I just sort of twiddle the knobs <laughs> and that's this sound. It's a little bit computery, it's, it doesn't sound quite right and I like how it juxtaposes against the vocals on the guitars. So. Empty bed All the books that you never read All your longings belong to Yeah, it's, what it's doing is it's just creating this 16th beat, like digga 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 kind of thing. And it just, it just feels like now we're in the next section of the song and it, it's something else is happening, but it also feels like, you know, what is that? What, why is that there? And it, those, all those things don't come back in for the rest of the song. So that's just that first bit. And I wanted to create that sense of 
you know, strangeness in what's happening. And if you use very conventional sounds, people get it straight away and they're like, oh yeah, I know what this is, cool, cool. But if you put sort of odd sounds or things that you maybe weird combinations of sounds, the, the listeners sort of still trying to figure it out and they, it's not all laid out on a plate for them. So we're giving that kind of environment for the vocal to live and, and bring in curiosity into the, into the story. So yeah, that's kind of my thinking with this. I didn't want it to be just a straight up acoustic guitar vocal because that's that's where it ends up. It ends up more straight straight up. Like So yeah, I hope that's inspired you. That's given you some ideas. I like to explain why I'm doing what I'm doing as well as what I'm doing. As a producer, it's very creative. I have to get into the flow and often it helps me to go back and look at these decisions I've made and go, oh yeah, I can see what I was doing there. I know what I was doing. And often in, you know, in the flow, it's just happening without a lot of cognition, really. It's just sort of happening because it feels right. And I encourage anyone who's doing their own production just to really get in the flow, have experiment. And when it, when it feels right, it kind of is right, really. At least if you, while you're capturing sounds, mixing, you know, you can make those sounds work in a mix later. But when you're generating ideas, it's really good just to get in the flow. Don't overthink it and, and create something that, uh, that feels right. And that's what I did here. OK, over and out.